everyone, welcome back to my workshop. Today I want to talk a bit about laser enclosures. If you've been around my channel for a while, you probably recognize this one behind me, and that's one I designed uh, most specifically around the Xtool D1, but has been working in many of the lasers I've brought into my workshop. However, I do have a good wood shop outside uh, that I'm able to build this from. I have uh, my larger CO2 laser that I was able to also cut out parts as well as my CNC uh, router that was used. And that's not for everyone. Uh, not everyone has the time, the tools, or the money to build a custom enclosure such as this. So I wanted to look at some other options, both for myself uh, in some of the lasers I've been getting. I actually haven't quite fit into this one. They might be a slightly different form factor, so they've been a little too long front to back or a little too tall top to bottom. And I could go and redesign this one if I felt like it, but um, like I said, that's not for everyone. And I wanted something maybe a little more flexible as I'm testing new machines uh, and uh, seeing how they go. So our friends at ComGrow did reach out to me and they sent me this laser enclosure. I believe they're calling it their medium laser, laser enclosure. And uh, this is their second go around. Uh, they took some feedback from their customers and uh, others on what they could do to improve it. And so those are included in this one. And we're going to take a look at those as we build it. And then I'm going to try it out with a few of my lasers uh, to see how they fit some of the otter shaped ones and uh, just the general features. So I'm going to look at this. I'm going to give you my feedback and impressions and uh, let's jump right into it. All right, so I've got all the parts laid out here. Uh, nothing too crazy. Um, all the individual plastic corners, they are the same, so they're not labeled. Um, there are a couple on here where they have the bars attached to the plastics. Um, so those are identified by that. Um, most of them, they're all bundled in by rubber band bu uh, bundles, and so they have letters on them. So, you know, there's an L, a W, these are H, and then your primary ones that are all similar, they're not labeled, and then these really short stubby ones that uh, are not labeled as well. So it's nice that they are labeled. That's going to make assembly a bit easier in identifying what we need. Now we're going to take a look at this port, and so it looks to be about uh, just a bit under four inches, so about three and three quarters. Uh, inches in diameter. Uh, if I'm looking at this right, so we'll line it up on our grid. Yeah, just maybe a quarter to an eighth inch under four inches. So this should fit four inch ducting um, much easier than having to adapt some of the other uh, enclosures that I've looked at. So that is great to see. And then they have this backer that will allow it to screw into and kind of clamp around the enclosure. So that should make for a decent seal. So this is the LED light. It's just a simple bar that has a USB plug on it and then a uh, clicking on off switch, a couple of Velcro straps to tie it to the bars at top. So we'll take a look, see how well that uh, um, hangs in there. There's a little bit of weight to it and uh, we'll see how bright it is. Um, but uh, at least it's an option. They don't provide a power source to this. So you're either gonna need a uh, USB power adapter, which with the number of phones that you've had over the years, you probably have one or they're inexpensive, or you could even run a USB battery pack on the side and just have to charge that up. But uh, it's nice to see a lighting option in there. Now the cover itself, um, it's fairly kind of rubbery material. It does have this kind of darkened plastic window. Um, we'll see how well that blocks out light. Again, when using these things, um, use your judgment with your eye protection. I would probably still recommend wearing your goggles with this, but it's nice that it's not clear. It will provide some protection, if not decent protection. And one thing I am noticing is that on the inside, instead of being black on both sides, like some of them, it does have this kind of white silvery finish. So that should help brighten up things as well on the inside and uh, provide a bit of reflectivity for this light that goes in there. So. That is one of the big complaints also is that they've been dark and you gotta add lights into them. Um, there are a couple more features about this cover that I'll show once we get it assembled. Um, they've added options for ports on both sides, both for the wiring and the exhaust. So we'll look at that when you get it together. And this is supposed to be fire resistant. So we will give it a bit of a flame test. That's always fun, but uh, we don't want to count on this to contain a fire, but just not make a fire worse while we are taking care of it. So let's start getting this thing assembled and then we'll look at it as we have it all together. All right, so we've got it basically together. I don't have the light in there or the port on there, but I wanted to note a couple things. So 
there are a number of these bars that have this flanged end. They are not labeled and uh, they are about 15 inches long. You need to take all of the individual pieces that are marked with you know the W, the L, and I think the H and attach those to these and then you build your top and your bottom frame and then the uh, parts with the 15 and the short stub are your uprights. Then the other bars just with the kind of the C-clamp ends on them those get pushed together and they act as supports that go in here. So and we've got a cover and it's a little wrinkly right now but I'm pretty sure that uh, you can heat this up or set it in the sun and that will smooth out. Um, but you see without having that bar in there um, you have more access in there and it's definitely a lot brighter. I'm going to go ahead and figure out where I want to uh, finalize these and I do need to attach the velcro to all the bars as well. We'll get this buttoned up, get the uh, the exhaust uh, port on as well, and uh, then we'll move ahead. All right, so I flipped it up so it's easier to see and access this. The instructions say basically um, pick your place where you want your LED bar and then mount it using the Velcro provided. So. Um, knowing what I've done in the past, what I'm going to first try is I'm going to put it up along this bar, try to tuck the cables down along there into this port out the side. Um, they only give you a couple strips of Velcro to attach all that, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a few of my, uh, my spares as well. We can also utilize these Velcro straps on the bars. There's a little extra Velcro in those, so that'll help us tuck them in there as well. And uh, so that's where I'm going to at least start it out with and see how it works and uh, go from there. They give you, uh, looks like, two, two of these white Velcro straps to anchor the, the light with. And so they would wrap around the bar. Um, I'm going to do something a little extra as well. So this is the bar. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to just fix it right here. Um, I'm actually going to use a little extra Velcro. I'm going to put some on the back of this and then put some on the bars. I've cut some sticky back hook and loop or Velcro. So I'm going to find the, which side is the soft side. I'm going to first affix that to the light bar. So I'm going to put one here. I'm going to leave them both parts stuck together. I'm going to take the backer off here and then just kind of center it, kind of eyeball it, stick it on there like that. So now that's plenty strong, it would hold in place. But just to be sure, we can add one of these around here as well, just to make sure it doesn't fall. Now they don't provide a power supply for this. It is just a USB cable and takes a typical five volt USB power source. So our options would be, uh, you can get like a cell phone charger, uh, an adapter plug into an outlet, and that's probably gonna be your best bet if you've got everything else plugged in. But um, I use these a lot. They're little USB battery uh, backup uh, devices. Um, great for cell phones and other things while you're remote. Um, and uh, this uh, will last a long time running this and it'll be one less thing that you've got plugged in. So um, we'll just plug that in here. We will turn this on and hit the switch. And there, as you can see, really brightens it up in there and that reflective material on the inside, I think is going to make a big difference over um, just if it was black, uh, LED lights and black background. And as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and put this cover down. Um, just to kind of show that we can probably still see in there. There we go. Yep, and you can still, still see the light in there. And there, it's very dark. So that's going to make a huge difference. So, all right. So the one other thing I want to take care of, or at least try to, is the covering in here. This window is really wrinkly, so it makes it a little more difficult to see through. So. Um, what should help even this out a bit is just applying some heat. So if you're in a sunny, warmer area uh, and it's a calm day, you could probably just set this out in the sun and just the act of that warming this up should soften that out. Otherwise, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a heat gun um, and uh, just kind of gently apply some heat to kind of help 
soften this up and smooth it out. Um, just be careful if you're doing this. You don't want to overheat it. Uh, you want to keep that air moving. Um, just kind of gently work it out. So I'm going to do that. We'll put the little time lapse on, see how it does, and uh, I'll show you the results after I'm done. All right, now it's not perfect, but uh, it's a lot better. And so I just use, this is a heat gun. Uh, it's actually meant for my RC modeling for heat shrinking the covering film on there. Um, so it does just kind of soften up, take some of the sharper wrinkles out. There's gonna be some waves into it just because it is a flexible uh, type material, but uh, it does help make it a little bit easier to see through it. Um, not a critical thing and the laser is still gonna function, the enclosure is gonna function, but it might just help you uh, see what's going on inside there a little bit better. So um, next, um, let's check the flame durability test. Okay, so this is made from a flame resistant material and that is there in case you do have uh, a flare up of your material, the machine gets stuck somewhere and causes your material to start burning. Uh, this should not be left unattended and so this isn't going to contain a full up fire and let you just come back and go, oh, my laser burned up. You really do need to be watching what's going on, be in the room, be aware of what it is and not just leave it running by itself. That's when bad things happen because this will uh, slow down a fire, it'll keep it from spreading, but if you don't attend to it uh, fairly quickly, it's still going to cause a problem long-term. But just to demonstrate that ability of this, um, I do have a butane torch here. This is a little bit hotter than any flame in here should be um, right on it. So we're going to apply this to the inside as if the flame was hitting it. And uh, I'm going to try to get the camera view from both inside and outside. We're going to see what this material does so you can see um, how well it will help contain a small fire. All right, I am going to go ahead and apply some flame to this. And I'm going to see I've got it right there. There is some smoke on the outside, but you see the inside is not burning at all. So the material is smoking a bit. It's definitely hot to the touch, but it is not damaged on the inside or the outside. There's just a bit of discoloration on the outside of the fabric. So this was, just, this was a butane torch test. We had it on there for about 10 seconds. It did not burn through. There was some smoking on the outside, but the material itself was not harmed. Uh, so this will help slow down a fire, but you know, do not leave your laser unattended. Be around, be aware, be ready to take action. As you see, it heated up and there was some smoke on the outside, so that is also going to be a warning that something's going on. Um, but never leave these unattended. This will only slow down something from happening, give you some time to react to it, and hopefully take care of it before it becomes a bigger problem. Just another feature and a reason why to be running an enclosure with these lasers. Down the front right corner and the front left corner, of the enclosure there are these sections where you can push through all of your cables so like your USB cable for your light and laser will come through and they have this kind of rubber gasket that helps seal back around the wires without harming them and uh, so you can get a fair number of cables through there and then if it's even bigger you could run it through there and then just seal the velcro back down so again that's on both corners you see you got the same thing over on this side so you can pick which side your cables are coming in and out of the enclosure uh, sealed up just enough to uh, not be a major leak all right i've moved the enclosure over to the laser bench and i've got it hooked up to the dust or the uh, air extraction so i'm going to be running this on my 20 watt atom stack a20 pro and some plywood that i know is fairly smoky that's going to give us a good opportunity to really see how this handles the smoke and how it uh, extracts it and such. Make sure that it uh, keeps it inside the enclosure and then moves it out. So, so one thing that I've noted in the other enclosures that we've looked at is you wanna make sure you have proper airflow. So you're trying to move the smoke out and to do that, it needs to move air through the enclosure and in. So I know a lot of people worry about it being really sealed. And you might notice that on the bottom of here, you can see that bottom bar and that there is a little bit of a gap there that would allow air through. That's actually good because you do want air to be able to pull in and get through the enclosure and then out the fan. If you have it too sealed in, you're gonna starve that fan. 
it's not going to be able to move the air and then the smoke's going to start collecting more. So uh, if you're buying one of these and you're concerned about that, uh, don't worry, it actually does need uh, that gap to allow airflow into the enclosure and then out through the fan. All right, we're about seven minutes into this burn and I'm still not getting any sort of smoke smell outside of there. I'm not even really seeing any smoke build up in there. And uh, that is good news. Now, one thing to note, this enclosure does not come with a fan, so you're gonna need to provide a fan. I'm running a VivoSun four inch fan. Uh, it's available on Amazon for about $30, give or take. And it works all right. It's probably uh, the lowest I'd wanna go on this. It has a rating of about 195 CFM. I'd really love to see that up around 250 or 300. And I may be actually swapping that out for a six inch fan that will be able to pull more, but I'm of course gonna have to throttle it down to a four inch ducting for these enclosures. So it's just one thing to keep in mind with this enclosure or any other enclosure, is you need to keep that airflow going. You need to have a decent fan that's gonna move the air. And then you need to have a decent uh, inlet to allow air in through that as well. All right, so we did pull this out and if I can get that to focus, you'll see that that was a pretty deep burn, pretty dark burn, left some charring on it. And so I, there was definitely smoke going through there. I tried to capture some too when it was cutting, there was definitely some smoke coming up off of the wood, but I wasn't seeing it really build up in there, nor was I seeing it or smelling it outside of the enclosure. So this enclosure tied with that Vivo Sun 4 inch fan did seem to do a pretty good job. And I know that this stuff is fairly smoky. I've run it a few times in uh, other jobs for cutting some material out. And uh, I was definitely seeing the smoke roll off of it. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the performance of this. One thing I did notice, however, is this single light bar, it uh, shed a lot of light kind of towards the middle, but as the, the gantry was up forward, it was creating some shadows. So. Um, perhaps if there were two and they were along the sides more up front it might be a little bit better but hey it's a lot better than not having light in there and the reflective walls help definitely brighten it up in there uh, and so it's good to see that included as well. All right well that's going to wrap it up for this video today. I hope this is informative and if you are interested in this enclosure I will have links down below to it. Some of the links down below are affiliate links they do give me a small kickback for that and I appreciate you using those if you did find them useful. It should be at no additional cost to you, but does help me provide additional content here to share with the rest of the community. If you have any questions or comments about this enclosure or anything else in my workshop, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do try to review those in a timely manner and get back to them as quickly as I can. And uh, if you wanna see what else I'm doing in my workshop, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I do try to upload videos regularly to share with you uh, new projects and or new products that I'm testing out here as well. Once again, thank you for stopping by and checking out my channel in this video. And uh, I hope you are able to get out in your workshop and make something yourself. We'll see you next time.